أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لقد أرسلنا رسلنا بالبينات وأنزلنا معهم الكتاب والميزان ليقوم الناس بالقسط صدق الله العظيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد as you must be knowing we shall be starting today with aya number 35 of surah hamim as-sajda a'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem bismillahir rahmanir rahim wa ma yulaqqaha illa alladhina sabaru wa ma yulaqqaha illa zu hazrin azim وإما ينزغنك من الشيطان نزغ فاستعذ بالله إنه هو السميع العليم صدق الله العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي اللهم ربنا الهمنا رشدنا واعذنا من شرور انفسنا اللهم انس وحشتنا في قبورنا وارحمنا بالقران العظيم اللهم اجعله لنا اماما ونورا وهدى ورحمه اللهم ذكرنا منه ما نسينا وعلمنا منه ما جهلنا وارزقنا تلاوته انا الليل وانا النهار واجعله لنا حجة يا رب العالمين امين I told you the group this the Bakki surahs of two groups that is fourth and fifth the main theme of these surahs is tawhid but tawhid has two aspects one is theoretical aspect that is tawhid in creed what our ulama call tawhid fil aqida so tawhid in creed is a theoretical aspect of tawhid and there is the other aspect tawhid in practice to be a muwahhid really you have to fulfill the requirements of both the aspects of tawhid but mostly among the religious minded people of the muslim ummah today the maximum importance is attached to the tawhid fil aqida all the arguments going on munazaras all go around some issues which are concerning the creed or aqida while i think in our times the practical aspect of tawhid is more important than the theoretical aspect and let me quote here the couplet of allama iqbal he says zinda quwwat thi zamane mein ye tauhid kabhi there was a time when tauhid used to be a very big living force in this world aur ab kya hai faqat ek masla hai ilm e kalam it has become a debating issue of this scholastic knowledge and that's all so in these surahs which we started from surah az-zumar then surah al-mu'min then surah hamid sajda and then we shall be reading today surah al-shura these four surahs of the quran are very important regarding this practical tawhid the theoretical tawhid in all the makki surahs you find it and maximum emphasis at that time was on theoretical because they believed in false gods they were worshiping idols they thought the angels are daughters of allah the christians thought that jesus is the son of allah some of the jews had said uzair was the son of allah and so on and so forth 
someone is God incarnate. So these things were more important at that time. But in our time, the collective system, the state, concept of state, and this system of political, socio economic life, these three aspects of life becoming one system, the political, socio economic this, this aspect of human life has become much, much, much more important than this theoretical side. Now, among these four surahs, number one, Surah Al-Zumar, Anebudullah Bukhlis Allahuddin, worship Allah, but keeping your absolute obedience exclusive for Allah. Don't include anybody else as absolute, for absolute obedience. Obedience there can be, but under the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can obey your elders, your teachers, your parents, your rulers, leaders, but not in anything which implies the disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then it becomes shirk. In the same way, love of Allah. You can love everything. Your children, your spouses, your parents, your city, your country, your nation, mankind. Love of mankind is also something very good. But love of Allah should be supreme. If the love for anything or anyone becomes equal to love of Allah, it is shirk. It has to be beneath it. So that was the basic theme at the personal level. You have to be bondsman to Allah exclusively. In the next surah this was, فَدْعُ اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُدِّينَ Because the essence of ibadah is dua, prayer. So pray Allah, but keeping your obedience, absolute obedience, reserved exclusively for Him. Then your du'a is du'a. Otherwise it is an exercise in futility. You are obeying Allah in some aspects and obeying someone else in other aspects, then Allah is not going to listen to you at all. Your prayers will be thrown back in your faces. Go away. Nothing doing. You have to obey me first. فَدْعُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِسِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ now, this is, so to say, a simile. This is a relationship. Allah and the Abd. Ibadah is obedience of Allah. Dua is the prayer from this bondsman to Allah. But then now, when this relationship is established, now you are, as an individual, a full mu'min. When this relationship is established fully, now it will extend out of your personality. Now it will take the form of dawa. Dawa and dua. The root is the same. Dua to Allah, dawa to people. Word is the same. But now you have to call people towards the way of Allah, towards the cause of Allah. Towards the deen of Allah. Ya Yuhanna Asobadu Rabbakum. Worship Allah. Love Allah. Adore Allah. Obey Allah. So this, this is the subject matter of Surah Hami Masaida. And the central theme is fixed by the ayah. وَمَنْ نَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِّنْ مَنْ دَعَاءِ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Whosoever, who can be better in this speech? Now the speech is the highest faculty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon human beings. This sight we have, but the animals have too. Some of the animals have more piercing sight than, our, than ours. There are certain animals who can see without light. We can't see. So this is nothing exclusive. Hearing. This faculty is also much more developed in animals. Smelling, 
most of the animals. They smell more. They gather more information through smelling. You see the dog smelling everything. He recognizes everything by smelling. The faculty which makes human being a human being is the faculty of speech. Highest faculty. In our brains, you know, the highest evolved area is called the gray matter. And in that gray matter there are areas, area for sight, that is behind, on the back, and so forth. But the largest area is of speech. And it has two aspects. You understand what somebody else is saying. This is one aspect of the speech. And then you express yourself. This is the other aspect of the speech. And the largest area on the gray matter of our brain is concerning the speech. And here that word has been used. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا Now this is the highest faculty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to the human beings. But the use of this faculty, now that is the difference. Some Hitler, some Bhutto, some other leader, he would use this faculty of speaking, addressing people, to become popular and a leader and dictator. Some lawyer, he will use this faculty to earn money. He can express himself better. He can argue in a better way. That is why. Even, you know, even hearing, for one hearing in the court, they can demand lakhs and lakhs of rupees. So this is because they can express in a better way. Law is the same. Every lawyer has the books. But how to present the case? But if some human being is using this faculty of speech solely to call people to Allah, so he is the highest. And that is the saying of the Prophet ﷺ. Best among you are those who understand Quran. This is this aspect of speech. Understanding. This is speech of Allah. What is Quran? Kalamullah. It is the speech of Allah. To be able to understand the Kalamullah and then to express it and convey it to the others. Whosoever devote themselves for this career, I should say career, not a side business, not a side issue, not a pastime, not a hobby, no, career. They, according to the hadith of Sahih of Imam Bukhari, they are the best among the Muslims. Now we shall see, because this medium of this dawah, Allah is Quran. We have been reading. O oh Muhammad, give glad tidings through Quran. Warn people through Quran. Remind people through Quran. فَإِنَّمَا يَسَّرْنَاهُ بِلِسَانِكَ لِتُبَشِّرَ بِهِ الْمُتَّقِينَ وَتُنزِرَ بِهِ قَوْمًا لُدَّهُ We give the glad tidings through Quran. Warn through Quran. وَذَكِّرْ بِالْقُرَانِ مَنْ يَخَافُ وَعِيدِ Remind people through Quran. Wherever he went, he recited the ayat of Allah. Not making his own discourses or speeches or sermons. No, 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 no. Wherever he went. Yatlu alayhim ayate, yatlu alayhim ayate, yatlu alayhim ayate, yatlu alayhim ayate. Four times in Quran this is repeated. Twice in Surah Al-Baqarah, once in Surah Al-Imran, and then again finally in Surah Al-Jumah. هُوَ الَّذِي بَعْصَ فِي الْلُمِّيِّنَ رَسُولًا مِّنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ That is why in this surah, Quran is mentioned so many times and from so many angles that there are only two surahs more in the Quran, whole of the Quran, which can come near this surah regarding this aspect. One, Surah Bani Israel, and the other, Surah Al-Furqan. But here it is actually the medium of da'wah, illallah. We have to call people towards Allah. But call people through what? Through Quran. This is the medium of da'wah. So we were reading the characteristics and the stations of the evolution of a character who is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Number one was 
ان الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا تتنزل عليهم الملائكه فاست ذس ريليشن شيب تو بي استابليش بيتوين جاد اند مان الله از ماي لورد اند ذن هي ستيكس تو ات هي ستيد فاست اون ات هي از فيرم اون ات سو فيرست ليفل از ذس ذن ناو داوا فروم يور personality it should come out naturally if some article is hot heat will emit out of it itself if you are sitting near a fire well heat will come to you you don't have to make any effort to get heat out of the fire it will itself come to you if some big block of ice is placed near you well coldness will come you come to you itself so if a person is really and fully mature as an abd of allah dawa ila allah will emit from him even if he doesn't make any effort from his very presence from his very personality it will come out as i told you this is the phenomenon of the physical phenomenon heat from the fire coolness from the ice in the same way a mature bond man of allah from him this dawa comes out this is the second stage and the third due to this dawa there must be a conflict people won't like it people who have become lords of of people they are the masters they are the rulers how can they leave their place for, for allah subhanahu wa taala to rule so a conflict is a must hence now forbearance steadfastness perseverance that is the third stage wal asr inna al insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bis sabr so the third ayah wa ma yulaqaha illa alladhina sabaru these three stations cannot be achieved but by those people only who are persevering who are forbearing who take all things patiently wa imma yanzaghannaka min ash-shaytani nazun and if per chance at some time you feel o oh, muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and through him allah is addressing us if we become dais towards allah callers towards allah now if some at some time satan he incites us and provokes us go and fight he has a he is called a bad name to you you reply in the same coin he has done this good evil to you reply in the same coin for this and that says imma yadzaghanna ka min ash-shaytan nazgun if you feel such an incitement always take this incitement that it is from satan tasta is billah so take and ask for refuge of allah subhanahu wa taala inna innahu huwa as-samiul alim verily he is listening everything and he is knowing everything this subject has once before come in surah al-araf wa ma yanzaghanna ka min ash-shaytan nazul fastaiz billah innahu samiul alim the only difference is here it is innahu huwa as-samiul alim more emphasis otherwise the aya is mostly the same as it appears in the end of surah al-araf wa min ayatihi al-layl wa an-nahar and from among the signs of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so these are the subjects which have come repeatedly repeatedly the night and the day and the sun and the moon la these are the ayat these are the signs of allah so don't worship them la tasjudu li shams wa la lil qamar wa hidu lillahi alladhi khalaqahunna worship and prostrate before not the sun nor the moon prostrate before allah who has created all of them in kuntum iyahu ta'budun if you really worship him alone fa istakbaru and if they show arrogance falladhina inda rabbika so those who are very near to your lord that is the angels highest order al malaikatul muqarrabun 
who are very close to Allah. يُسَبِّحُونَ لَهُ بِاللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ Day and night, they are glorifying Allah with His praise. وَهُمْ لَا يَسْأَمُونَ And they never get tired of glorifying and praising Allah. This is the ayah of Sajdah. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنَّكَ تَرَ الْأَرْضَ خَاشِعَةً And from His signs that you can see is that you see that the land is lying humbled, lying low, barren. فَإِذَا أَنزَلْنَا عَلَيْهَ الْمَاهِ And when we send down over it water, اِحْتَزَّتْ وَرَبَتْ It stirs and swells, there's life. إِنَّ الَّذِي أَحْيَاهَا Verily, he who has given life to this dead land, لَا مُحْيِي الْمَوْتَى He will give life to the dead also. إِنَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنِ قَدِيرٍ Verily, He is powerful over everything. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يُلْحِدُونَ فِي آيَاتِنَا لَا يَخْفَوْنَ عَنْهَا Verily, those who are trying to be crooked with our revelations, misinterpreting, they are not hidden from our eyes. We know them. أَفَمَنْ يُلْقَى فِي النَّارِ So the one who will be thrown in fire, خَيْرٌ Is he better? Or أَمَّنْ يَاتِي آمِنًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ Or the one who comes on the day of judgment in security and peace. اَمَلُوا مَا شَيْتُمْ Now do whatever you like. إِنَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ بَصِيرٌ Whatever you are doing, Allah Ta'ala knows it. And He is seeing it. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بِالزِّكْرِ لَمَّا جَاهُمْ Verily, those who have disbelieved the admonition, the reminding, when it has come to them, وَإِنَّهُ لَكِتَابٌ عَصِيزٌ They will be losers. And surely, this Qur'an is a mighty book. لَا يَاتِيهِ الْبَاطِرُ بِمْ بَيْنِ يَدَيْهِ وَلَا خَبِّنْ خَلْفِهِ Falsehood cannot attack this Qur'an, neither from front nor from the back. تَنزِيلُ مِنْ حَكِيمٍ حَمِيدٌ This is descending down a revelation of the one who is all wise, all praiseworthy. I told you, Quran is mentioned in this surah in so many ways. Let us count from the very beginning. First of all, we had the beginning. Ayah number two. Kitabun fussilat ayatuhu Quranan Arabiyan liqawmi alamun. Bashiran wa nazira. Farada aksaruhum fahum la yisbaun. This is a book whose ayat, whose revelations are explained fully. And it has been made into a, an Arabic Quran, so that you can understand. And this is the Bashir and Nazir. Muhammad is Bashir and Nazir on the basis of this book. Actually, Bashir and Nazir is this book, the bearer of the glad tidings and the warner. Now, for the second time, Turn to ayah number 26. وَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَوَرُوا لَا تَسْمَعُوا لِهَادَ الْقُرْآنِ وَالْغَوْ فِيهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَغْلِبُونَ And the disbelievers say, don't listen to this Qur'an. And when Muhammad recites this Qur'an to people, you hoot him, boo him, make noises, so that people are, cannot listen to it. If you want to be successful, because Qur'an is so mighty, it can influence people. It can possess them. It can move them. And then you will be the losers. So stop this Quran. And for the third time now, لا يَعْتِهِ الْبَاطِلُ بِمْ بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ Ayat 42. This Quran is so fortified that batil falsehood cannot attack it, neither from the front nor from behind. وَلَا مِنْ خَلْفِهِ تَنْزِيلٌ مِنْ حَكِي مِنْ حَمِيدٌ مَا يُقَالُ لَكَ إِلَّا قَدْ قِيلَ لِرُسُلِ مِنْ قَبْلِكَ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, nothing has been said to you which was not said to the messengers who were before you. إِنَّ رَبَّكَ لَذُو مَغْفِرَةٍ وَذُوِ قَابٍ عَلِيمٍ Verily your Lord is the Lord of forgiveness, but at the same time the Lord of painful punishment. وَلَوْ جَعَلْنَاهُ قُرْآنًا عَجَبِيًا The fourth time, again Qur'an being mentioned. Had we made this Qur'an 
in some foreign language? The Kalu, they would have said, Lona Fusilat Ayatuhu. Why not are its ayat, its revelations explained? Ajamiyun Arabi. Is a Ajami of Quran sent for the Arabi people? We are Arabs. Our language is Arabi. So there should have been an Arabic Quran. But now when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent Arabic Quran, they, they are not accepting it. Qul huwa lillazina amanu hudam wa shifa. Say, this Quran is for those who believe guidance as well as a healing, a medicine, a remedy. وَالَّذِينَ لَا يُمِنُونَ فِي آزَانِهِمْ بَقْرٌ As for those who don't believe, in their ears is a heaviness. وَهُوَ عَلَيْهِمْ عَمَا And this Qur'an has become a blindness for them. أُولَائِكَ يُنَادَوْنَ مِنْ مَكَانٍ بَعِيدٌ It seems that they are being called from a very far off place. Muhammad is calling them in front of them, very near from them, but to them it seems the voice is coming from very far off distance. وَلَقَدْ آكَيْنَا مُوسَ الْكِتَابَ فَقْتُ الْيَفَفِيهِ And we had given Musa the book. But then there was differences concerning it arose. وَلَوْنَا كَلِمَةٌ سَبَقَتْ مِنْ رَبِّكَ And if the word of your Lord had not passed for a definite period of time, نَقْوَزْ يَا بَيْنَهُ all the things would have been settled and decided between them. وَإِنَّهُمْ لَفِي شَكِّ مِنْهُمْ مُرِيبٌ And now they are in about this Qur'an. Now they are in a very grave and disturbing doubt. They should have believed in Qur'an. Now this is the fifth time that Qur'an is being mentioned. وَإِنَّهُمْ لَفِي شَكِّ مِنْهُمْ مُرِيبٌ مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلِنَفْسِهِ Whosoever does good deeds, for he does it for his own sake. For his own benefit. And whosoever is committing bad deeds, well, the loss will be his. And your Lord is not cruel to his and unjust to his servants. To him is referred the knowledge of the hour. That us when it will come, nobody knows except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not even the malaika. Nobody knows. And whichever fruit comes out from its sheaths, and whosoever female, man or animal, carries in her womb any child, and whosoever bears it, illa bail mehi. All these things are in the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who is bearing whom? Who has a son in her womb? Who has a daughter in her womb? When she will bear the child. And imagine the day when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, Where are those whom you associated with me? They will say, I de we declare it to you, our Lord. None of us will witness to it. Now we don't believe in any associate with you. That is a matter of the past. And those they used to call upon before, they will be lost to them. And they will come to believe that now for them there is no escape. Man is never tired of praying for good. Oh Allah, give me this thing. Oh Allah, give me this thing. Oh Allah, give me this thing. And if some evil touches him, he is absolutely cast down, depressed and despaired. And we make, if we make him taste our mercy, after the harm that had, put, had come to him, he would say, it's mine, I have done it. I have changed my conditions. Through hard work, I have changed my lot. And I don't think that that ever is going to come and there is going to be any day of judgment. And if I am returned to my Lord, it's the same subject we found it and we read it in Surah Al-Kahf. In 
النبي عنده لحسنى فار مي وذ هيم ويل بي اول ايفري ثينج گڈ ويلث ايتسيترا اول دي گڈلي ثينگز فلن رب فلن رب ان الذين كفروا بما عملوا نو وي شيل تيل ذيس ذيس بيليورز وات دي هاد دان ولا نذيقنهم من عذاب غليظ اند وي شيل ميك ذيم تيست ا هارش جاستايسمنت وإذا أنعمنا على الإنسان أعرض ونعى بجانبه. And when we bless a man, he turns away and withdraws to a side. Then he is not praying to us. He has all the money, all the comforts, whatever he needs. There is plenty of it. So now he doesn't pray to us. وإذا أنعمنا على الإنسان أعرض ونعى بجانبه. Turns to his side. وإذا مسوا الشر فزوا دعاء عريس. And when some Harm comes to him. Now he has very long prayers. Oh Allah, Oh Allah, Oh Allah. Now du'a in Aris, prayers very long. All are ayat um in kana min indillahi summa kafatum. Again, Quran mentioned here. Say to them, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, think if this Quran which I am presenting is really from Allah subhanahu wa taala. Suma kafartum, and then you reject it. You don't accept it. Man adal lo mim man hu afi shakasim baid. So who would be more astray than the one who is far off in enmity? Now you are only refusing to accept it due to enmity against me. Otherwise your hearts have testified to it that I have not composed this kalam, this book. This is divine. This is coming to me through revelation from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. And for the last time, this ayah is very profound, very important. So nuri him ayat na fil afaq wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyan lahum annahu alhaq. Soon we shall show to them our signs in the universe as well as within themselves until it becomes absolutely clear to them. That this Quran is the truth. What does it mean? This Quran was revealed 1400 years ago. 14 long centuries have passed, and during the past two and three centuries, there has been explosion of knowledge. The physical sciences, the knowledge, has greatly expanded, but. Every advancement in scientific knowledge has confirmed Quran. That's what Quran said to 1400 years ago was correct. So as this human knowledge is progressing, is advancing, the truthfulness of Quran is being established more and more every day. Just recall the book written by Maurice Bokai, surgeon, doctor by profession, surgeon. French King Faisal Shah actually once went to consult him for some ailment and presented to him a copy of Quran and said to him, he said, how can I understand? He said, okay, you learn some Arabic, learn. It's not a dead language; it's a living language. Learn Arabic and read it. He did it, and then he wrote the book. He said, "There's nothing in Quran which might have been proved wrong by all these inventions and all the discoveries of science. There are so many things in Bible which have been proved false, wrong. The Quran, the Bible, and science. Yet the Bible, the Quran, and science. This is the title of his book. And then he embraced Islam also. And I told you, Dr. Kelat Moore." He is the biggest embryologist at Toronto University, and he says it's amazing how 1400 years ago, when there was no dissection of bodies, no microscopes, nothing of this sort, these stages of the development of the embryo in the womb of the mothers, how it could be explained, amazing. So, with the passage of time, whatever new knowledge comes to man. It is confirming that Quran is true. Sanurihim, we shall show to them very soon. 
ayatina, our our signs, fil afaq, in the whole of the universe, wa fi anfusihim, and also within them, the embryology is within them. Hatta yatabanna yatbayyana lahum annahu alhaq, till that they come to believe firmly that this Qur'an is the truth. Awalab yakfi bi rabbika annahu ala kulli shayin shaheed, is it not sufficient for your Lord? That he is witness over everything. Allah innahum fi biryatim min liqaahi. Behold, they are in doubt about meeting their Lord. Allah innahum bi kulli shayin muhid. Behold, he has already encompassed everything. Nobody can run away from him. Now we come to Surah Shura. This is the climax of these four surahs. And here the subject of practical Tawheed comes its, reaches its zenith. What is the zenith of Tawheed? The collective system of human life should come under the obedience of Allah. Without any exception. Just as a person, as an individual, فَعَبُدِلَّهَ مُخْلِسَ اللَّهُ الدِّينَ Worship Allah. Keeping your obedience, absolute obedience, exclusively reserved for Allah. In the same way, this political, socio-economic system of yours, all aspects of this life must be under the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this we call iqamatu deen. Establish the deen of Allah. And this surah is the surah of iqamatu deen. And please note, it's my feeling, maybe you also share it with me, if not now, sometime in future. For the Muslim Ummah today, our requirements regarding Quran are somewhat different from the requirements of the Sahaba. The Sahaba previously were Mushrikeen, non-believers. We are born believers. Different case. We belong to Muslim Ummah. Although our believing is only verbal, but we are believers. We don't challenge. So for the Ummah of today, the most important and most relevant surah in the Makki Quran is Surah Ushura. And most relevant and most important surah of the Madani Quran is Surah Al Hadid. The last surah of the 27th part. This is my feeling. And as you know, Makki Qur'an is twice the size of Madani Qur'an. Madani is one-third. Two-third is Makki. The same ratio proportion is there between the size of Surah Al-Hadid and the size of Surah Al-Shura. It has 52 ayat, perhaps? Hmm? 53. And that has 29. Surah Al-Hadid. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Hamim Ain Sin Taf. Now this is the second surah which is starting with five alphabets. Three in Quran with one. Surah Qaf, Surah Noon, Surah Saad. We have read only Surah Saad up till now. Then there are so many starting with two. Hamim, Hamim. Tawseen, Yaseen, Taha, two. Then three, Alif Lam Meem, Alif Lam Ra. Then four, Alif Lam Meem Saad, Alif Lam Meem Ra. Then five, two are five. One was Surah Maryam, Kaf, Ha, Ya, Ain, Saad. And second is this, Ha, Meem, Ain, Seen, Kaf. And now this is unique in this respect. The two ayat of this surah are comprising of Otherwise, either the huruf muqattaat are not counted as a ayah, or if they are counted, that is one ayah, not two. Here it is two. Hami man sin qaf kazalika yuhi ilayka wa ilal lazina min qablika Allahu al-azizul hakim. In this way, Allah, who is almighty, the wise, sends revelation to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and to those who were before you. 
Now, kazalika, what does it mean? That will come in the last of this surah. Kazalika will be explained in the end of this surah. What is the methodology of revelation? But here, you just wait. But Muhammad Sallallahu had the experience. It was coming to him. So Allah is saying, O oh Muhammad, just as we are revealing this Qur'an to you, in the same way we have been revealing our books to the former messengers of Allah. لَهُ مَعْفِ السَّمَاوَاتِ مُعْفِلْدَ To him belongs everything that is in the heavens and everything that is in the earth. وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ And he is the high, the mighty. تَقَادُ السَّمَاوَاتُ يَتَفَطَّرْنَ مِنْ فَوْقِهِنَّ The heavens may near, are near to be rent asunder from above. وَالْمَلَائِكَةُ يُسَبِّحُونَ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّهِمْ And the angels keep on glorifying Allah with His praise. وَيَسْتَغْفِرُونَ لِمَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ And they keep on asking the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the people who dwell in, the, in this earth. And we have read that in detail in Surah Al-Ghafir or Surah Al-Mu'min. أَلَا إِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَفُرُ الرَّحِيمُ Behold, Allah is verily the forgiving, the merciful. وَالَّذِينَ تَخَدُوا مِنْ دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَا As for those who have taken for themselves Besides Allah, protectors, Allah who have you There is no protector. Allah is the protector and watcher over them. Wama bewakil, and O oh, you Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, you are not a guardian over them. Wa kazalik awhayna ilayka Quran. Again kazalik. In this way we have sent or revealed to you this Quran which is Arabic, Quran and Arabian. لِتُنزِرَ أُمَّ الْقُرَى وَمَنْ حَوْلَهَا So that you warn the mother city, mother town. أُمَّ الْقُرَى مَكَّى was the central city of Arabia, Arabian Peninsula. And we have read it before also. حَتَّى نَبْعَسَ فِي أُمِّهَا رَسُولَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has never been destroying any land unless he sent first a messenger to the central town of that area, that locality. So, O oh Muhammad, you have to warn these people who are living in Makkah, first of all, لِتُنزِرَ أُمَّ الْقُرَى وَمَنْ حَوْلَهَا And those who are around it. وَتُنزِرَ يَوْمُ الْجَمْعَ And so that you warn them of the day of gathering, when four humanity will gather before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. لَا رَيْبَ فِي In which there is no doubt. فَرِيقٌ فِي الْجَنَّةِ one party, one group will be in the garden, the other party or group will be in the blazing fire. And had Allah wished, He could make you or them all one ummah. But the wisdom of His creation is that He has given man the option. You can go this way or that way. So that now he will admit into his mercy only those whom he wishes. But Zalimun, and as for those who are the evildoers, for them there will be no protector and no helper. Have they taken for themselves, besides Allah, protectors? Fallahu huwal wali. Allah is the only protector. These are your false thoughts. Allah is the only protector. فَهُوَ الْوَلِي فَاللَّهُ هُوَ الْوَلِي وَهُوَ يُحْيِي الْبَوْتَى And He gives life to the dead. وَهُوَ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْنِ قَدِيرٌ And He is, He is powerful over everything. Now, the subject of system. Human life the collective aspect of human life. One is the personal life. But you know, what's much more important today is the collective aspect. If there is something wrong in the collective system, its evil spreads throughout the society. So it has to be a just social order, based on justice, fair play. So, and the first point regarding this is that sovereignty belongs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
So in this ayah now, in this first ayah of the second section, first of all what is established is that the authority to decide matters is with Allah and Allah alone. وَمَخْتَلَفْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And in whichsoever thing you differ, فَحُكْمَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ So authority to decide it is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What should be the rights of the husband? What should be the rights of the wife? There can be different views. What are the duties, responsibilities of a husband? What are the duties and responsibilities of a wife? You may differ, but the decision will be given by Allah. What are the rights of the rulers? And what are the rights of the ruled? Who will decide? If you ask the rulers, they will say, we should have the maximum rights. We have to keep the law and order and this and that, so there should be maximum authority in our hands. As far as the ruled people come to this, we should have the freedom. We don't want a totalitarian state. We don't want a dictatorship. We want to have something in our hands. Who will decide? What's the point of justice? What's the point of balance? Allah will decide. So these are in the same way. Here is the capital, here is the labor. Capital, it wants its share. It wants to dominate. It demands the lion's share. Labor says, no. Capital itself is nothing. It's our labor that has gained everything. We deserve more. But who will decide? The capitalist would say, will present his case, and the labor would present their case. Who will decide? Allah. وَمَخْتَلَفْتُمْ فِيهِ مِنْ شَيْءٍ فَحُكْمُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ ذَلِكُمُ اللَّهُ رَبِّي He is Allah, my Lord. عَلَيْهِ تَوَكْقُلْتُ I have put all of my trust in Him. وَإِلَيْهِ أُنِيبُ And to Him I turn my face. فَاتِرُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ He is the originator of the heavens and the earth. جَعَلَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجَةً he has made from your own selves, your species, spouses for you. And in the same way for the cattle, there are spouses, species, sexes. Species is the same, but sex is different. Due to this difference of sexes, he multiplies you. Procreation. Procreation is through this. Difference of sex. Laisa kamis lehi shayyun. There is nothing, 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 none, none like him. Lahuwa sayyun ula seer. And he is all seeing, all listening. Lahu makali du samawati wal lard. To he belong all the keys of the heavens and the earth. Yab sutu rizqa liman yasha wa yaqdir. For whomsoever he likes, he outspreads the sustenance. And for whomsoever he likes, he straightens it or restricts it. In Nahu be kulli shayin alim. He knows everything. If he is outspreading, it is also based on his knowledge. If he is restricting, this is also based on his knowledge. There is nothing haphazard. Shara alakum minaddi, now comes the key ayah of this surah. And in this respect I may say, the key ayah of the Qur'an. On the subject of Iqamatuddin, this is the key ayah of the whole Qur'an. Shara alakum minaddi, for you, O Muslims, O followers of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we have ordained as deen, the same thing ma wasa bihi nuhan, which we had ordained to Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. Wallazi awahina ilayk, and that which we have revealed to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. Wa ma wasayna bihi Ibrahima wa Musa wa Isa. And what we had enjoined on Ibrahim and Musa and Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. What does it mean? The deen has been the same. Throughout, from day one 
till the last day. Deen is the same. What is the deen? Deen comprises of two things. Allah is your Lord and ruler. You have to worship Him and obey Him. And His messenger is His representative. So the obedience to Allah will be through the obedience to His messenger. Now when the messenger was Moses, whatever commandments came through him, you had to follow. When the messenger was Jesus, whatever commandments came to you through him, you had to follow. And now finally, our messenger is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What we have sent to him, you have to obey. This is the... In principle, there has been no difference whatsoever in deen. There has been difference in sharia's. We had the ayah in Surah Al-Ma'idah. لِكُلِّنْ جَعَلْنَا مِنْكُمْ شِرْعَةً وَمِنْ حَاجَةً For each ummah from amongst you, we fix the sharia and a minhaj. Sharia, the law. The law of Moses was somewhat different from the law of Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. Shariat e Muswi, Shariat e Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. The rules regarding the psalm, fasting, in the former sharia were different. In our sharia, different. The form of salah in the former sharia was different. In our sharia, it is different. Methodology was also different. In the methodology of, methodology of Musa, the priority was to get a nation which was oppressed badly, to get freedom for it. That was priority number one. On the first meeting with Thron, the demand was placed, an arsil ma'ana bani Israel. Now let the children of Israel go with us. The methodology of Jesus was different. Methodology of Ibrahim was different. I spoke at this subject at length two years before, at our annual Central of Tanzim Islami in Karachi. These, these are the methodologies, Minhaj. But Minhaj is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's a revolutionary Minhaj, a revolutionary methodology. Why? The why answer to the why is coming now. We have understood from this first part of this ayah. شَرَعَ لَكُمْ مِنَ الدِّينِ مَا وَصَّى بِهِ نُوحًا وَالَّذِيَ وَحِنَا إِلَيْكُ وَمَا وَصَّيْنَا بِهِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى We have ordained you to, for you as a deen the same as we ordained to Nuh, to Ibrahim, to Musa and Isa. And which we now have revealed to you, O Muhammad. And what is your duty now? أَنْ أَقِيمُ الدِّينِ وَلَا تَتَفَرَّقُوا فِيهِ we have perfected our deen on Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Al-yawm akmaltu lakum deenakum, wa atmamtu alaykum ni'mati, wa raziitu lakum al-islam al-deena. Now it's the duty of the ummah to establish this thing. An aqeebu al-deen wa la tatafarraqu fi. So that you establish this deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. Actually, practically. And don't differ regarding this deen and the qamat al-deen. You can have differences in Sharia. For example, whether when you are praying, should you keep your hands here or here or let them loose, you can differ. But in Iqamatul Deen and Deen, the two principles of Deen, sovereignty to Him, final authority to Him, and His obedience through the obedience of the Messenger of Allah. This should remain firm. And to establish this system should be your foremost priority. The first duty of a truly believing mu'min is to strive to establish the deen of Allah. If he is not doing it, he has so somehow accepted the deen of batil, ta'ut. He has reconciled with it. He is at peace with it. He is serving it. He is trying to prosper, uh, prosper under it. And he has no relation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالْتَاغُوتْ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ You have to do kufr with taghut first and then believe in Allah. Unless you do kufr with taghut. 
You detach yourself from Tahoot. You might have to live there, but you have to live, which you say, in protest. Living in protest and taking from that system only the minimum thing which is required for your subsistence. And rest of your time, your money, your resources, your intelligence, your understanding, whatever Allah has bestowed you, upon you, should be reserved for the struggle to change this system. Topple over this taghut and this nizam batil and establish the deen of Allah over this earth. An aqeemuddin wa la tatafarraqu Now let us complete this ayah. Now before Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were two groups. One were the Ummiyeen, who didn't know what is, what is book and what is prophethood and what is messengerhood and what is Sharia. They never knew it. And the other were the, were the people of the book. Regarding the first, Allah says, Kabur al mushrikeena ma tadrohum ilayh. Oh, Muhammad, it's very hard on these mushrikeen associated with Allah, what you are calling them towards. To give up their false gods, the gods of their fathers, forefathers, their national traditions. How can they do it? So don't think that people will rally around you very easily. You will call and they will come. No, no, no. Very hard times are ahead. You will have to work very hard, very hard, very hard. Don't have false hopes. That very soon people will accept it. No. It's very hard for these mushrikeen. But you are calling them. Not easy for them to accept. Allah But there is a the ray of hope. Allah chooses for himself whosoever he wishes. Sometimes he chooses himself. Okay, come on. Just as Umar Razi Allah Ta'ala Anhu. He came out of his house with the view to, v to kill Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Drawn out sword in his hand. But then, in the very root, he was told, your sister and brother-in-law, they have converted to Islam. You know this incident, this historical fact. So this is whom Allah is Tiba. He was going somewhere else, Allah called him, no, come here, Umar, <laughs> don't go that way. And then number two is, Whosoever turns towards him and watch, watch, wishes to be guided to him, Allah surely will guide him also. So there are two types of persons. One are the persons who themselves seek guidance. For them, the promise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he will definitely give them guidance. But there are others also, he might not be seeking, but maybe that Allah pulls them himself using his prerogative, his authority. As for the people of the book, the next ayah is discussing is, I think the time is over, and these guys seeing to me again and again. So I finish here. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Qur'an al-Azim, wa nafani wa iyaakum bil ayat wa zikil hakim. الله أكبر الله أكبر. The Islamic Organization of North America, Iona, is an organization dedicated to reviving the Quran into the hearts of Muslims while bringing its message to non-Muslims. The obligations of a Muslim as ordained by the Quran and Sunnah can be understood as having four levels. 1. A Muslim is required to develop real faith and conviction, Iman, in one's heart. 2. A Muslim is required to live a life of complete submission to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 3. A Muslim is required to propagate and disseminate the message of Islam to humanity as a whole. Four. A Muslim is required to try his utmost in establishing the just Islamic order. The first and foremost objective of establishing Iona is to assist the Muslims in North America to uphold and implement these obligations first on themselves, 
their families, inform their friends, and then to invite the non-Muslims to Islam. The ultimate goal is to seek Allah's pleasure and salvation in the hereafter. For more information about Iona, please visit us at www.tanzim.us. You may also email us at info at t-a-n-z-e-e-m dot u-s or call our toll-free number 866-779-IONA. Join us. Together we can make a difference.